I'm Jesus, and this video is about the 10 best Battle Scarred skins out there. The, the Battle Scarred skins where the creators really went out of their way to do something interesting with it. That's what I'm going to focus on. It's also sponsored by Loop There, the skin rental site that also happens to have a marketplace where you can sell your skins for no sales fees at all and then cash out your money. So, you know, keeping 100% of your money, pretty good, right? But more about that later. Now, when Valve created skins, they included a feature that they thought people were going to love. Skinware. That's right, the designers thought that people would love to be able to buy weapons with authentic, battle-worn finishes, and even went to quite some effort to code it. They included more than one way for weapons to wear, the, the standard paint being scratched and chipped away, and also the stunning effect found on patina and most gunsmith finishes. And it was authentic, it was clever, it was well-designed, but there was one problem. Most players actually didn't like battle scarred weapons. Oops. Now, there are some exceptions where the battle scarred finishes have found a bit more traction. Your Blaxomovs, your Hyper Beasts, your Basilisks, the, the Blaxomovs in particular definitely have a dedicated fan base, but at the end of the day, there isn't really anything that special about these worn skin designs. The wear effect isn't really being used to do anything that interesting, but there are a few skins out there that buck the trend where the designer has actually tried to do something unique and innovative with skinware. And in this video, I want to have a look at them. I found 10 and I want to show you guys them. So firstly, there's the off-world skins and there's two of these in the game. And as they wear, they reveal all these details that aren't visible in better quality conditions. For example, on the P90, all of this extra stuff starts showing up. So there's a devil's face, there's an Illuminati symbol, there's the word toxic, there's some waves, there's the word good for nothing with a face, and there's a skull and crossbones on the back. There's lots of stuff. Um, the Glock, on the other hand, doesn't have quite as much there, but it does have this face. And is it just me, or does that look a lot like the Iron Warriors iconography from 40K? Uh, I don't know, it looks pretty similar to me, although, Games Workshop is not the most original company, so it's possible they stole it from someone else in the first place. Anyway, next up is the Alt Medusa, and in some respects, this is just your standard gradually fading skin, but it has a bit of a twist, because famously, as it fades, it starts getting a bit green. Now, you might be seeing what's on screen and thinking, well that's that's not very green, and look, I'm not saying the McSkillet didn't totally tamper with the colours on this thumbnail to exaggerate the effect, but I am saying he might have had a reason for it. You see, the difference is actually pretty subtle and only shows up in certain lighting. So here is a, a super low float factory new Medusa. We'll rotate it so it's nice and bright, and let's just replace it with a super high float Battle Scarred Medusa, a, a green witch as it's called. And you can see what the difference is. It is definitely greener, but it's pretty minor. It only really shows up when you bump up the saturation. However, this is actually McSkillet's old Battle Scarred Medusa, and as we know from his videos, when you put it in the sun in the game, it actually does look pretty green. So anyway, this is a, a subtle little change to how it wears, but it does provide for a legitimate alternative look to the skin rather than just being darker, and but I think that's pretty cool. Anyway, our next skin is the Revolver Llama Cannon, a fantastic skin on a horrible weapon, and you can already see what's going on. Basically, it goes from being blue and beige to entirely beige, um, which is nothing fancy, but it is still pretty much an alternative colour scheme, as opposed to just being a battered version of the same skin, and I think that's pretty nice. I'd really love to see it on a more popular weapon, as opposed to a Revolver, because I think there'd be lots of interest in the Battle Scarred version. Now, the Llama Cannon isn't the only example of community main skins doing this, there's actually quite a few others. And firstly, there's the SSG Abyss, and essentially, this skin desaturates as its wear value increases. So uh, I'm not sure which one I really prefer in all honesty, but fun fact, the underlying texture pattern looks like bark on a tree trunk to me. I was a bit surprised when I saw it. Anyway, there's also the P250 Vertigray, and this one features a green copper rust as it wears. Uh, I mentioned this in another video, but the name of the gun actually refers to the green copper carbonate depicted on it. And finally, there's a P2000 Imperial Dragon, and this skin sort of takes on a magenta colour as it gets more battle scarred. And I, I gotta say, if this was on a P250 or a USPS or a Glock or any pistol that actually gets a lot of use, 
I think it'd be really popular, and I feel like it's a bit of a shame that this goes unappreciated on a P2000, although I, I doubt the designer feels the same way. He probably made a lot of money out of this. Now, most of the finishes we've been seeing so far are either patina or gunsmith finishes. However, there are some skins that use the chipping style to create some unique battle scarred finishes as well. One such skin is the Mag-7 Firestarter. The idea is that the red edges are burning, hence it's called Firestarter, pretty self-explanatory. Now, I don't know if you could say this is really a great skin, but I will definitely give it points for the effort. There's also the Tech-9 Hades, which has the really cool idea of having helmets turn into skulls as it wears. Unfortunately, the execution is pretty woeful, and the best you can get is this half-worn mess. However, at least one community skin designer decided to actually do this design properly, and that would be the P90 Death Grip in the Hydra case. So I think it's a skin that speaks for itself. A good battle scarred version is actually pretty pricey too. When it's a bit less worn like this, it's still a bit messy, so I think that's why there's a lot of demand for the really highly worn ones. But either way, Really, really interesting design. Great work from the artist. And finally, we have the Rust Coat, which I feel like I have to include. This skin is complete garbage in my opinion. It goes from being a crappy blue at a low float to being just crap at a high one. And with that, I think I've spoken enough about it. So this video is sponsored by Loot Bear. And you may know Loot Bear as a skin rental site, a place where you can either rent or rent out skins. What you might not know about Loot Bear is that you can also buy and sell your skins there. And cool little feature. There is no sales tax on Loot Bear because it's not the primary function of the website. The primary function is renting skins out. So if you sell something on Loot Bear, you don't have to pay any sales fees. That's right. 0% sales fees. You get to keep 100% of what you sold it for, which you can then cash out for that matter or spend on other skins. And if you're looking to purchase instead, well, Loot Bear has crypto and PayPal for deposits, and there are some really sweet discounts on it. Of course, you can also rent out your skins as well, particularly if you're not using them. It's a great way to get a bit of extra money out of them in the meantime. And keep in mind, you'll still own the skin. It's just that you're going to get a bit of extra passive income on top of it. And every skin you deposit is fully insured. If someone tries to run off of it, you'll get 110% of your money back so you'll pretty much make money if someone steals from you i don't have much use for my fire serpent and fade personally at the moment so i'm going to be depositing these on the site and if you prefer to do renting well you can do that too loot bear features a monthly rental subscription system allowing you to switch your items as you please over the course of the month it's called loot bear prime you can try it eight days for free and you can get discounts by buying multiple months in advance so you can have a neat inventory and you can get it for a fraction of the normal cost. Anyway, that's Loot Bear. Link is in the description. Check it out. It's really cool. And with that, I think I'm done. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you even more if you actually stuck around for that plug. Uh, if you like this video, please like, comment, subscribe. Otherwise, trust the numbers, not your gut. I'm Pazoos. Thanks for watching. See ya.